Ambassador Sadvinder Singh, Deputy Secretary General for the ASEAN Economic Community, Ms. Christina Russo, Director for Global Approach and International Cooperation in R&I at the Director General for Research and Innovation at the European Commission, distinguished guests, researchers, innovators, scientists, practitioners, a very warm welcome to all of you to the European Research and Innovation Days ASEAN 2021. My name is Susanne Ranzovasu and I am Regional Coordinator for the Euraxis Worldwide team here in Southeast Asia. Euraxis Worldwide is your gateway to collaboration and exchange in science, research and innovation with European partners. The European Research and Innovation Days are our annual flagship event. It is really a platform that is dedicated to you, the scientists, the researchers, the innovators here in ASEAN. We want this to be your platform. We want this to be a platform where you can find out about opportunities that are open to you to join forces with European collaborators in jointly pushing the frontiers of science. We want this to be a platform where you can connect with new partners and where you can also build your own research career. This year's event is already the sixth in this series and we've dedicated it to the issue of climate change and global health, which of course are the pressing issues that the global community needs to work on together. We have put together a program with over 25 sessions that is running until mid-December and we very much hope that you will make use of this offer to you and join us in many, many sessions. Now, I hand over now to my colleague, Dr. Jenny El Mako, to introduce you to today's session and also to our moderator. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. So my name is Jenny Lynn Almako. I'm a regional coordinator as well of Euraxis ASEAN. And actually, you can say that I'm a product or, you know, a testimony of the European research uh, area. I did my Erasmus. And after that, I was a Marie uh, Curie, Skodowska Curie Actions Scholar. And uh, now I'm here with Euraxis ASEAN. So basically, our event today is two-pronged. First, we talk about science diplomacy in action. And then after that, we have the Meet My Lab. So the first part is, is on EU-ASEAN scientific collaboration in tackling climate change and global health challenges. So international collaboration is essential in finding solutions to transnational challenges, be it climate change or the COVID-19 pandemic. And our two keynote speakers will talk about this. So of course, we have His Excellency Satvinder Singh, Deputy Secretary General for the ASEAN Economic Community, and Director Maria Cristina Russo for the Global Approach and International Cooperation in Research and Innovation from the DG Research and Innovation of the European Commission. And for the Meet My Lab, we're gonna talk about climate change, innovation, and global health. And I'd like to introduce to you, who will take us through this, uh, this wonderful afternoon, our moderator, and his name is Dave Albao. Dave is the Executive Director of the Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation Incorporated, and um, he's an, it's an NGO based in Negros in the Philippines, known for taking care of the Njugan Island, a wildlife sanctuary. And PRRCFI's work is in experiential environmental education, sustainable fisheries, marine protected area management, climate change mitigation, and lately, reducing the flow of plastic to the ocean through sweep see waste education to eradicate plastic. So Dave, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for guiding this discussion and the platform is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for having me today. Um, I am very interested and in looking forward to the discussion, uh, especially on uh, diplomacy and action. We will open first and hear from the Deputy Secretary General for ASEAN Economic Community in Indonesia. His Excellency Satvinder Singh, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, of course, uh, Ms. Russo, the Director for Global Approach International Cooperation from the Directorate General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission. Uh, Ms. Boisman, who is the head of uh, the Research Innovation Global Approach and International Partnerships of the European Commission. 
Dr. Susan, Dr. Jenny from the URSS, and of course, Dave, uh, distinguished guests. Very uh, good morning or a good afternoon, wherever you are. First, a deep appreciation to the URSS, Euros uh, ASEAN, and the European Commission for hosting this EU Research and Innovation Days ASEAN 2021. And it's indeed uh, a deep honor for me to be speaking to all of you. Uh, it's great to be in the company of uh, universities, research institutions, the industry actors, the NGOs, both from the public and the private sector, both from the Europe and also from ASEAN. As strategic partners, ASEAN and EU, we all have been longstanding um, and we have been building on some dynamic and really very broad based relationships with each other. Our strategic partnership today has been deeply instrumental in helping integration of ASEAN. And I believe that today it's in, in fact, it's becoming even more profoundly important in helping us in paving the way towards the recovery from COVID-19 and also in helping us face the climate change challenges that both our regions are currently facing. As all of you know, pandemic and its aftermath continues. Uh, ASEAN actually has, uh, in, no in November last year, we adopted the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework uh, in November uh, last year. And it was, it's more of like a living document that had a consolidated strategy with full commitment by all the ASEAN member leaders to commit towards helping the ASEAN region exit out of the COVID-19 crisis. But at the same time, it was also written out um, and also planned in an opportunistic way to use this occasion to also strengthen our integration and also to strengthen our resiliency. This, this comprehensive, this ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, we call it the ACRF, it has five broad categories and it does include healthcare systems, human security, intra-regional market and broader economic integration, of course, it includes digital transformation, which is, you know, is a key part of our, our whole um, uh, reaction to how we can mitigate ourselves out of the challenges of the COVID. And finally, it also works towards advancing towards a much more resilient and a sustainable future, taking into account the important challenges that today we all are discussing. It is our hope that, you know, that at the end of the event today, more and more good ideas and concrete collaborations were formed. And some of these ideas could actually also alleviate uh, priorities under the ACRF, because like I said, it's a living document. We are looking for ways to strengthen our reaction against the challenges that we are facing. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to say that our event today also coincides, as you all know, with COP26 meetings, which I'm sure many of you have been actively following. And posts of those meetings, I feel that this is so timely that we're having this, this discussion because it's truly a timely occasion to reflect and to also strategize on how we can sharpen our commitments and to contribute towards the global and our regional region to region climate change agenda. And you know, in the COP26, the ASEAN leaders, they spoke and many of them have actually urged developed countries and all our partners to enhance the international cooperation and assistance on the provision of timely, effective and adequate and predictable support to the ASEAN member states, especially in areas like financing, in areas of the development and transfer of environmentally sound technology, in the area of scientific research and capacity building. I think all of this are needed in order for us um, uh, to meet our obligations under the Paris Agreement. Likewise, the ASEAN State of Climate Change Report also kind of provides an overview of our own region's status on climate change. It outlines the actions that can be further improved and it also identifies opportunities for collaboration for support for the ASEAN efforts towards achieving our 2050 goals and beyond the goals towards carbon neutrality. And this road towards carbon neutrality by 2050 by ASEAN, it's indeed for us still a very daunting task and really requires extensive planning and collaborative efforts between our regions. And I truly hope the EU Research and Innovation Days ASEAN 2021 actually becomes a, a good step towards uh, helping us to foster stronger collaboration in building local capacities, especially 
in capacities that will bring about new outstanding solutions and technologies that will help the region to be able, for example, to be able to track, trace, to measure, and even evaluate carbon footprints, and also, for example, mitigating carbon abate activities like nature-based solutions, climate change, and even circular economy. And I think through this ASEAN green recovery, we believe that ASEAN economies are now all more actively than ever advocating climate change mitigation and adaptation measures. And efforts are bolstered towards moving more and more towards circular economy and also towards investing and developing deeper into green technology, while all of us want to move towards an option of um, uh, embracing or committing towards um, activities that lead towards lower emission um, capacities in the region. At the same time, I know that the EU has been working to revigorate and to accelerate the global green technology innovation within EU Europe itself. And, and I know that there's been a huge amount of, uh, of um, of um, progress that has been made in making green technology even widely affordable. And what we truly hope in the ASEAN is that, you know, we have access to some of these green technology solutions. And, and this is where I see that the ASEAN and the EU can definitely forge a much stronger partnership, you know, under the EU ASEAN dialogue on green tech and innovation mapping. And I think this is something we should work towards uh, in, in making that materialize even better and deeper. The dialogue definitely, I know that it aims to establish a proof of visibility in pilot activities that focus on technology transfer to further improve things like plastic waste management, areas like sustainable manufacturing, and even into areas like COVID-19 research cooperation. I'm truly anticipating that similar collaborations will be established through the EU Research and Innovation Days ASEAN 2021. Hope to see that uh, being discussed today. Moreover, in bright, I just want to highlight a couple of things that I feel are important. I think the first is mainly riding on the momentum of some of the work that we've done before. Now, first is really in the area of high performance computing. I think this is a place where ASEAN is devising ourselves, our teams. We know we have done good work, but we also want to devise a much more proactive, uh, higher scale up of some of these uh, HPC capacity building and capability initiatives. And this is where we believe that we have truly, we, together with Europe, we definitely can vision towards establishing a shared uh, high performance computing infrastructure in ASEAN. Um, and, and I think we want to be able to get that out to a much larger pool of uh, our young talent in the region. I think we have done very well the last couple of years. I've been involved with some of your work. Uh, I'm actually uh, anxious to see this thing scaled up. And I think this is something that my team and I will work with all of you to ensure how do we do that in an effective way. Furthermore, in shaping some of our digital future, and at the same time, in terms of embracing some of the transnational, transnational challenges, uh, we believe that HPC will be quite instrumental tool in helping to build the foundation for scientific, industrial, even societal advancements which will then get translated into economic growth. And again, this is the back against the background of the increasing digitalization. I think this one area definitely can be of strong mutual interest. And I definitely want to explore further how we can work together. Furthermore, one more area where I see where we can really strengthen ourselves is I've seen EU really at the forefront for satellite-based navigation. I think the use of the European space data I see today is really quite unlimited, not only in high level quality and accessibility of data, but also I think it will be very useful in rapid development of new technologies, um, for example, in AI, in data analytics, or even in cloud computing, all in uh, supporting uh, the needs of uh, some of the challenges that we are facing, both in the area of climate change, in the area of planning for the future, I think this is an area where we want to collaborate deeper. And realizing the growing importance of uh, satellite-based navigation, ASEAN has partnered actually with GNSS.Asia in order to organize a multi-country multi virtual Galileo hackathons. Now, this is an initiative that's going to be inviting students from the Southeast Asia region 
to apply uh, satellite positioning technologies from Galileo to solve some of those environmental or climate change issues that face nationally. The EU Global Navigation Satellite System and the Earth Observation Technology, including Galileo, they definitely provide some very important data for climate and environmental research, and especially on how maybe even the rising sea levels and the effects on global warming, uh, including the effects of the racial retreats are gonna have to our region. I think this is where, again, the applications are gonna be massive. Now, beyond, beyond navigation, I think satellite data and also offers kind of solutions to managing even the outbreaks of disease by analyzing solutions for emerging, re emerging responses, even contact tracing, queue management, even drone-based applications. I mean, these are just, I'm just touching the tip of the surface of areas where both ASEAN and EU could further cooperate. Uh, we could, should come together to cooperate in order to see how do we harness that space dialogue, you know. Personally, I feel, you know, no corner of the globe today is resistant to the ongoing global pandemic or the global climate crisis. I think we all are facing the same storm, but all of us are sitting on different parts of the world. But science definitely informs us that really global pandemic and climate change um, it's not going to go away so quickly. And the risk, as you know, year on year getting uh, is multiplying. The risk is multiplying. And we can see it's, it's worsening and even the challenges are getting deeper. But there's one thing positive that all of us have the hope is that the human ingenious and of course science, both of these are coming together in order to help us solve some of these issues in a timely way. I think this is where the ASEAN and the EU should really leverage on scientific collaboration and diplomacy to advance towards our sustainable future and towards better global health. And only through our collaboration, I'm confident that uh, we can really take all the steps further in order to advance and bring about better lives for our people and in both our regions and better collaboration. I think with that, I like to wish um, all of you um, and the EU Research and Innovation Days ASEAN 2021, a very successful discussion. Over to you, Chair. Thank you so much, Deputy Secretary General uh, Satvinder Singh. Um, I have a few notes, a lot of the keywords that I've uh, heard today are uh, things that I also, that also interest me. Circular economy and green technology. Um, this is something that we're all um, um, is excited to hear more about later in the, the Meet My Lab section of the session, but also um, taking note of high performance computing and satellite based navigation as very distinct um, uh, pathways for, for the research to be able to help our communities, uh, Deputy Secretary General. Thank you so much. And um, we'll, I'll be reading the ASEAN Green Re Recovery uh, document that you have been, uh, that you've mentioned. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I hope the weather is fine in, in you're in Indonesia, right? Yes, I'm in Jakarta and we are fine. And Jakarta is coming out well from the COVID too. So we are keeping up in this process. Same here. Um, and also, by the way, there's a lot of people um, uh, that are tuning in from Indonesia, also Jakarta, and of course the Philippines, a lot of universities. So I'm sure they appreciate your message and uh, the, the message that you're bringing to all of us on what we are we need to uh, support you know, in terms of research and development in the future. Thank you so much, His Excellency Satvinder Singh. Now, next up, um, I am personally excited to hear from her because I am very curious about the European Green Deal and its international dimension. And uh, hopefully that will be touched on her message today. Let's welcome the Director for Global Approach and International Cooperation in RI, DG Research and Innovation at the European Commission. Please welcome Ms. Maria Russo. Hi. Thank you very much, uh, Dave, and uh, good morning or good afternoon to everybody. I'm uh, very excited to be here with uh, um, more than um, 150 uh, attendees and participants and panelists together from different countries of the world. And uh, it's really nice to see the chat, uh, all the places where you are uh, coming from virtually and uh, joining this uh, important uh, Air Access seminar. Let me also start by thanking Air Access 
and in particular Suzanne and Jenny for the work done. I think that, um, that uh, these uh, events are really very important in order to um, strengthen uh, the, the, the knowledge of the enormous possibility that exists for the um, EU ASEAN cooperation, in particular in the field of research and innovation. I don't want to be too long because already the Deputy Secretary General for ASEAN gave a broad picture of the different issues at stake. And I would like to focus on a couple of, um, of messages from the political point of view. You will have many days and uh, or sessions that will allow you to get an in-depth knowledge of the different aspects. But what I would like to say basically are three things. First of all, that uh, the Asian is a strategic region for the European Union. We have uh, a renewed strategic partnership since 2020. And within this uh, renewed European Union ASEAN partnership, research and innovation has a very important role to play. We also uh, have uh, uh, adopted in the European Commission, together with our colleagues uh, from uh, the European External Election Service, a communication which gives policy orientation for the cooperation in the, in the Indo-Pacific region. And there again, research and innovation is really considered one of the areas that could be really um, further developed and used in order to concretely build this uh, cooperation. And uh, that is also um, what we say in uh, uh, our new strategy for international cooperation at European level, the global approach to research and innovation, which was adopted uh, uh, earlier this year, in May this year, and which uh, represents the new international cooperation strategy in research and innovation, aiming at giving uh, the policy framework to the activities that we undertake under the um, Horizon Europe program and under the other um, different actions that uh, we in the European Union, together with our member states, carry out in the field of research and innovation. Let me be a bit more specific, which is our strategy for cooperation in research and innovation. First of all, we want to be open. We want to be very open. Europe wants to have the possibility to work together with the best scientists in the world in order to tackle together the global societal challenges. And this is really something important. And what we have as a unique is what we call the European Research Framework Program now called Horizon Europe, which, is, uh, which has been launched this year, which is the biggest, uh, the biggest, I'm saying, multilateral research and innovation program in the world. It is a program that uh, uh, mobilizes 95 billion of euros with a duration of seven years, which touches upon the different uh, areas of research, the different fields of research, and also um, uh, with different instruments, uh, starting from collaborative projects, individual actions, uh, actions to support innovation. Again, I will not go into details because you will have different sessions on that. But just to say that um, the, the, this, this is a huge, um, a huge program uh, which reflects really a policy choice of the importance of research and innovation in the European Union and of the importance for us of research and innovation being open to the world. And there, uh, let me also make a parenthesis, the Deputy Secretary General spoke um, at length on the Comprehensive Recovery Framework. Um, I do not need to, to say how the COVID also impacted uh, Europe and how it showed, uh, first of all, the importance of enhancing the cooperation with our partners in Europe and outside Europe. But also in Europe, we have launched uh, what we call a recovery and resilience uh, plan, which uh, is a huge plan of um, uh, supporting the different member states 
in order to step out from the COVID crisis, but also in order to build resilience. And there again, what I would like to say is that uh, research innovation is a key pillar of the resilience effort that we're going to do in the European Union. But let me be get back to the international uh, uh, cooperation strategy and to the new global approach for research and innovation. I said that uh, this uh, approach that we want to have is open, as open as possible, um, uh, with the possibility of having some restrictions where it is necessary, um, where um, the European interest um, justify that. And also what we would like to do through this uh, new strategy for international cooperation is to really um, use uh, much more the tools which are available to the science diplomacy and hence the importance of this event today. Science diplomacy as a, as a key element of our strategy, science diplomacy to, to, let's say, facilitate scientists from different parts of the world, from sometimes parts of the world which do not have such a smooth relationship, to work together and to show how really, really science can be um, an important vehicle in order to um, not only uh, progress to tackling the global societal challenges, but to unify uh, our peoples in the world. So importance of science diplomacy, hence the, the, the pertinence of today's discussion, and then also the importance of supporting through science and innovation, the, what we call the green transition. And uh, now I am uh, very excited to be here today, the day where we are finalizing, uh, uh, hopefully with some uh, good results, also the COP26 discussion. And uh, as it was mentioned also by the Secretary General, uh, it's important certainly to have uh, the ambitions, to confirm the ambitions, to have clear objectives, and the European Union do, does have them. Eh? The European Union as the Green Deal, as one of the core of the action uh, in, this, um, in this current time. You know that in the European Commission, uh, we have a very active president, actually, a very active woman, Mrs. Ursula von der Leyen, who has set some clear priorities when she was elected in 2019. And the Green Deal is one of that. We want to become carbon neutral by 2050, and we want to reduce um, our emissions of 55% by 2030. And for doing that, we have uh, put in place not only ambitious objectives, but also a set of measures, of legislative measures, which create the obligations for the member states to, to take the necessary actions to reach those uh, um, objectives. And also, in particular, to the recovery and resilience facility, we have set also the money which, and the funds which are necessary to do that, with 37% of all this facility to be used to support the Green Deal. That to say that uh, in, in our strategy for international cooperation, the Green Deal has a, an important place. And uh, what, we, we, what we say in our global approach is that we do want to cooperate with our strategic partners, such as, for example, ASEAN, in order to tackle those uh, key priorities and societal challenges, such as the Green Deal. So research and innovation to support the, um, the transition, the green transition. I, I will not be long, I don't have time. I could, uh, I could speak a lot also on how we support the digital transition, on uh, what we have done in terms of uh, a cooperation in the field of health in reacting to the COVID, uh, but uh, um, I have not the possibility to do it now and my colleagues can do it later. But uh, what I really want to say is that, uh, uh, to be clear, we have the political willingness of enhance our cooperation in research innovation, the, 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 the willingness to focus on science diplomacy, to focus on climate change, the need, the need to cooperate more and they've 
um, when uh, when the, you were presented by the colleagues with your uh, your huge um, I see experience on all what is related to ocean to marine pollution. I mean, I think you can say really a lot on how important it is also to use research and innovation to tackle those challenges. Also, the negative consequences that the COVID has uh, brought into, for example, marine pollution. You mentioned that. Um, and uh, and uh, we have um, so the political willingness, the need, and we have the instruments because we have the Europe, Europe, Horizon Europe program, and we also have a specific joint fu joint funding scheme with the ASEAN. What uh, I would like to see is that. Uh, Thanks to this initiative, like the one that is is uh, is uh, um, launched by Air Access and will last some days. Thanks to your uh, participation and mobilization, we fully tap the potential of this instrument and really um, uh, use um, this uh, the opportunity that uh, that uh, that we have to enhance our work together in order to really together tackle those important challenges that uh, we have uh, ahead of us. With that, uh, I would like to thank you again for, uh, for this uh, wonderful seminar, and I would like to wish you all the best for the discussion that you will have today and in the next days. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Director Russo. I feel abundantly blessed by a lot of these insights and uh, you know the highlights for me is definitely learning about learning more about science diplomacy as a key aspect of our strategy for international cooperation at a time where climate change is um at everyone's you know face because we are facing it every single day of our lives um this message of yours kind of sets the stage for our session today and also to to um, establish the need of a scientist, as you've said in your keynote, the best scientists in the world solving the world's most pressing issues as well. It only it only uh, fits, right? We need the best scientists to set, to solve uh, the issues that everyone faces. By the way, Director Russo, where are you calling from? I forgot to ask you earlier. Actually, um, I should be calling from Brussels, where the European Commission uh, is uh, located. But actually, I'm uh, today in Rome, so I'm calling from Italy. I, I would like to know how your how your weather is like there today. You wouldn't uh, believe, but the weather is very bad. I mean, uh, we don't have today uh, the usual Italian sunshine. I don't know, Pierrick, my colleague, is here with me. He's in Brussels. Maybe in Brussels, it's even better than in Italy today. I don't know, <laughs> but it's very cold. Very cold. Four degrees. Four degrees. Four Oh, no, mm. here it's not, it's not cold, but it's gray, which is not the usual in uh, in uh, in my own town, which is uh, the reason why I'm asking Dr. Russo is that I believe in the future our conversations, especially when we're doing Zoom calls, is really to understand the atmosphere, the environment around us, you know, outside our windows, and also just so you know, there's 300 plus people watching us on Facebook who listen to your uh, uh, keynote um, and. It, interesting mentions on uh, certain documents like the European Research Framework or Eurofair. Eurofair. <laughs> um, I suggest that we all search that and get copies of those. And of course, also the European Green Deal, which are the commitments and, and uh, the pathways that we will take to get to your goals. You know, uh, you said 55% uh, reduction of emissions by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Thank you so much, Director Rousseau for uh, setting the stage, for giving us the background and the mandate and the order that we will have um, so that we can continue working in research and innovation and really making sure that um, our research contributes to uh, solutions to the world's problems at the moment. Thank you so much.